Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here, and today we'll be installing Linux Mint on VirtualBox using a Windows 10 host computer. We'll first download Linux Mint, then we'll create a new virtual machine, and finally we'll install Linux Mint on that virtual machine. I'm here on the linuxmint.com website where we'll download Linux Mint, and if you just go up to the download section and click on it, we'll be greeted by the Linux Mint 19.3 Trisha download. If you're new and stopping by to watch a video today, Make sure to subscribe below and hit the notification bell for more installs. And let's scroll down to the bottom here where we can see the three different types of Linux Mint desktop, Cinnamon, Mate, and XFCE. Today I'll go ahead and just download the Cinnamon version and I'll go ahead and create a 64-bit architecture virtual machine. So that's the image I want to download. Let's go ahead and click on that. If we continue down, you can select a mirror that's closest to you so the Harvard School of Engineering will work great for me. And you can see that the download has begun. And now that I've downloaded the ISO, I'm going to launch and use the VirtualBox app. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit the Start Menu Engine and then search for VirtualBox and go ahead and start it up. VirtualBox is available at virtualbox.org where you can download it. Also, if you wanna learn more about VirtualBox, you can check out my walkthrough and install video. It's a great place to start if you're a beginner. I'll also put a link in the description below to that video. VirtualBox here is an open source software for the virtualization of machines. Simply put, you can emulate a computer through the use of this software. So the first thing we're gonna do in order to create a new virtual machine is hit the new button. And let's go ahead and name this one. So since I'm installing Linux Mint, I'm gonna go ahead and call this virtual machine Linux Mint. And as you can see down here, the type of platform gets automatically populated because it detected I put Linux in here. If it doesn't go ahead and select Linux from the dropdown, Linux Mint is a Ubuntu based distribution and we downloaded the 64 bit architecture. So you can go ahead and just simply select the Ubuntu 64 bit as the version because it doesn't have Linux Mint in the dropdown. After you've done this, you can go ahead and select next. Following that, we get to select our memory size. I have eight gigs available for my virtual machine. Go ahead and supply at least two gigs of memory for most Linux distributions, but just make sure you don't get into the orange or red zone or else you'll starve your own host computer of memory. Once you have that set, you can go ahead and hit the next button. Following that, we'll go ahead and create a new virtual hard disk now and hit the create button. The default VDI is fine for me. You can also select between VHD and VMDK. It might be a little bit easier to migrate to other virtualization softwares if you select the other two, but the VDI native is fine for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit next. Following that, we get to select how we want our storage space, this that we're creating, allocated, and that's either dynamically or a fixed size. If you select the fixed size, it'll automatically take out whatever size that you specify out of your current system, therefore render it not usable by the current system. But if you select dynamically allocated, which is the default, it'll grow as your virtual machine grows, saving you some space. So that's the one I like to select. I'm gonna go ahead and hit next after that. Let's go ahead and make sure that we at least allocate 32 gigs of virtual disk space to our Linux Mint platform that we're gonna be installing today. The reason being, I've had issues in the past with selecting anything under 32 gigs. And once you've done that, go ahead and hit create. And at this point, you've created your virtual machine and you're about ready to launch it, but we're gonna to have to do a couple things before we do. VirtualBox is developed by Oracle, and thanks to them, we have a very powerful free virtualization software, which is more than suitable for most computers. Virtualization just refers to the process where you can create a virtual machine in an emulated environment, such as VirtualBox, the app we're using. And a virtual machine is just a platform that runs an emulated computer with the hardware and resources that are available alongside your main computer in a virtual environment. So let's go to settings and just change a couple things around. We'll wanna to go to system, and then let's go ahead and enable the EFI mode. Since most newer computers come with EFI enabled BIOS, that way we can emulate a newer computer. Let's go to the processor tab, and I'm just gonna go ahead and allocate two cores of the CPU in order for my virtual machine to run. It'll make it run a little more smoother for me. You can also keep it at one if you don't have any more cores available. Following that, I'm gonna to go to the storage space. And as you can see here, our Linux Mint.VDI is our hard disk and we have about 32 gigs allocated here. But what I'm more interested in is this empty right here under the controller IDE. This is where we'll go ahead and insert our install image that we just got done downloading. If we click over here on the right hand side, we can go ahead and click on choose a disk file and select the one that we just got done downloading. As you can see here, I have Linux Mint 19.3, the Cinnamon desktop version, 64-bit. Let's go ahead and click that and hit open. Following that, I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And now we're ready to go ahead and boot our virtual 
machine in VirtualBox. Another neat thing about VirtualBox is that it's available for most platforms, including Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. It really doesn't matter what system you use because the layout of VirtualBox really doesn't change between the platforms. So you'll be familiar with it on any host platform where you choose to install it on. Finally, let's go ahead and hit the start button in order to start our virtual machine that we just created and give it a few moments here. Now we're just asked to go ahead and select a startup disk. Well, we already have one loaded, but let's go ahead and make sure that it's Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon 64-bit ISO file and hit start. And now we're being welcomed by the boot up screen here for Linux Mint. We have a few options. What I like to do here is go ahead and change to the scaled mode so we can see things a little better. I'm gonna go ahead and just make this a little bigger so we can see everything. All right, and if you made it this far, please hit the like button, it really does help me out. And what we wanna select is the very first option, which is start Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon, 64 bit. Let's go ahead and press enter and give it a few moments to go ahead and load up the system. And once the live image is loaded up, we'll see the install Linux Mint option right here on the desktop. Let's go ahead and double click that and let the installer launch. And now we have the installer in front of us. Let me just make this a little bigger. All right, and the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and select the language which I wanna run an installer with. So English is fine for me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue once I have the language selected. And the next thing is the keyboard layout. So English US is fine for me. In order to test your keyboard, you can go ahead and type in something here in this field box and whatever you type in should come out. And it does, I typed in QWERTY and got out QWERTY. So I know things are correct with my keyboard. And now I can hit the continue button. Now we're asked if we wanna go ahead and install third-party software or graphics and Wi-Fi hardware. If you have some kind of unusual Wi-Fi hardware or graphics cards such as NVIDIA graphics cards, you might want to go ahead and select this option. Okay. It doesn't necessarily hurt to, so I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway and hit continue. Here we're told that we have no operating systems detected, and that's because we just got done creating a virtual machine disk in order to go ahead and install Linux Mint on. So the option I'm gonna go ahead and select is erase a disk and install Linux Mint. Well, it's not really erasing anything because we have a clean disk that we just got done creating anyway. So as long as you're following through using VirtualBox to create a virtual machine and install Linux Mint on, you'll be fine. And it does warn you that it's gonna go ahead and delete anything and everything from that disk. Again, we don't have anything on the disk since we just got done creating a new one. The other two options you have here is to go ahead and encrypt your Linux Mint installation for more security. This will just ask you for a second security key in order to go ahead and enter your newly installed Linux Mint system before you go ahead and type in the username and password to log into the system. Otherwise, you can use the LVM, which is the logical volume management, which allows you to go ahead and take snapshots of the system, as well as make it easier for resizing various volumes or partitions on the system. This is usually a pretty good option to go ahead and select if you're using a virtual machine where you might be changing up storage space in the future. But I'm gonna go ahead and just keep the default option here and hit install now. Now it's warning us one last time that we are about to write our changes to the disk. And since we've confirmed that we have nothing on the disk and we just got done creating it, we're gonna go ahead and hit continue and then choose our time zone. Today I'll be in Los Angeles, select wherever you're currently located in the world and hit continue. Following that, we get to type in our name as well as our computer's name. And I'm just gonna make those all savvy Nick. You can choose whatever you want. Your computer name is what other computers are gonna see on your network. And let's go ahead and put a password in for the user that we just got done creating. Once you got that password in, you can select between the options down here, which are to encrypt your home folder if you like, or log in automatically. I don't suggest you select this option because someone could just restart your computer and then be able to log into your user account without a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep the default and just hit continue. And at this point, we're installed in Linux Mint. This will take a few minutes. All right, and once the install is complete, you'll get this message here where you can go ahead and continue testing or restart now. What we're interested is in restart now, so let's go ahead and click it. Give it a few moments to just go ahead and restart the system. At this point, it says you can remove your installation media. Just go ahead and press enter so it can go ahead and reboot. You might have to press it twice. And if you get an error, it's not a big deal. Go ahead and ignore it. They've had a few issues with the most recent VirtualBox version, but it won't mess up your installation. So in the background, I see that it's paused. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here and just power off the machine. And we'll go ahead and start it up again. Because of that error, it probably paused our machine. So let's go ahead and log back in. And it should boot into our system of Linux Mint that we just got done installing. And as you can see here, it's asking for my password. 
for my user. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter that in and log into my newly installed Linux Mint system. Congratulations, if you made it this far, you've successfully installed Linux Mint on VirtualBox. You can go ahead and exit out of here and we are welcomed by the greeter. What I'm gonna do is uh, uncheck the show this dialog box at startup and then we're just gonna go ahead and explore our desktop here. First thing that we probably wanna do is go ahead and install the VirtualBox guest edition CD on here. So what I'm gonna do is control F and then switch to the full screen mode. And if I go to the bottom here, I can simply go to devices and hit the insert guest edition CD. And here we'll be able to uh, go ahead and run that if we just type in our password for our administrative user. And this will help with correcting our resolution and making things run a little smoother if we go ahead and install this right away. And look at that, it says that it's successfully, well, it's successfully installed because our resolution is perfect now. So we're gonna go ahead and press enter to go ahead and exit out. And let's go ahead and explore the desktop environment real quick. On the desktop, we have access to our computer and our home folder for the user that we just created. And then on the bottom left, we have the start menu, which has various shortcuts like Firefox, the software manager, system settings, a terminal, as well as our home folder again. You can also lock the screen, log out, and shut down the computer from here. Right of that, we have all of our applications, including subcategories where we can select various applications. And on the top, we can enter in different search criteria in order to find various different applications that exist on the system. So if I click on display, I'm gonna go ahead and get the display so I can change up the resolution, which is one of the first things I like to go ahead and do. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this. And then on the bottom left, we can hit uh, show our desktop, as well as launch a Firefox web browser, which is the default web browser, launch a terminal, or the home directory for the current user. And then on the far right hand side, we can look at the time and date, as well as volume control, look at our wireless or wired connection and the settings to that. Then if you have any removable drives, you'll have this icon here. As you can see, we have the guest edition CD still in here. You can inject it if you need to. We have some notifications from the update manager. If you click that, you can go ahead and make various changes to the update manager or install updates from here. Well, that's really it. I hope you enjoyed this install of Linux Mint on VirtualBox. Let me know if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions. Please post them in the comments section below. Also make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Thanks for watching.